Hey, what's up? This is Pat Flynn from smartpassiveincome.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a scrolling effect in your keynote presentation so you can show off websites and other long pages in your keynote presentation just like this. All right, let's check it out. Hey, what's up everybody? I'm super stoked to have you here and to show you this really cool effect you can do in your keynote presentation. I do this every once in a while to show off a page that I might be showing and I might do certain call outs while I'm doing this, uh, you know, in certain segments of a particular website. But this is really cool because instead of having to exit keynote and go to the web to show something in particular on the web, you can actually just do this and it just is a really nice fancy way, really slick to show off a website that you might be putting into your keynote presentation. So the first thing to do here, and it's really important because what's, what's gonna happen is we're gonna take a bunch of screenshots of different parts of a website that we wanna put in our presentation and we're gonna put them together in keynote and have them transition from one to the other in a way where it sort of scrolls up so it looks like we're actually coming down a page. But to do that, we need to get the screenshots from a particular website. And so I'm gonna use my website here as a demo. And you'll wanna download a tool. You don't have to download this tool, but this just makes it really easy to make sure you're getting the right sizes and everything aligns up and you're taking the right size screenshots. So the tool here is, uh, you can actually see a toolbar thing here for it. It's resize window. The tool is actually called window resizer and if you go to google and go window resizer uh, i think there's one for firefox and also potentially safari too but i have the one from the chrome web store and what this does is it puts this little toolbar here or this little uh icon here for resize window and you click on this as you can see I have a whole bunch of different options for uh, v for sizes of the window that I can create so for example if I wanted to do uh, 1280 by 720 I can just click that and all of a sudden it changes uh, to that right there or I can click it to 1020 by 768 and so on and so forth now when you get this and you install it you want to do um, a 1280 by 720 viewport and if I go to edit presets here I can show you really quickly how to set that up. You'll want to do a custom size. Um, and again, the custom size should be the exact size of the presentation that you're giving. So it's not always gonna be 1280 by 720. That just happens to be the size of this video. So it could be 1024 by 768. Again, make sure it just matches the size of the slides that you're gonna be presenting with. So for this example, I'm doing 1280 by 720 and I want it to be the viewport. The viewport means this part, uh, I hope I can highlight it here. This is the viewport here. If I make it the window, it's gonna include the stuff at the top and the, you know, the toolbar and the tabs and stuff. And you don't want that part to scroll with you when you're doing this little effect. Um, and then, so I have 1280 by 720. Resize target is viewport. Um, and then I just create a description and I just call it viewport. It'll show me here. I already have this setting here. Um, it just, the description is this part underneath. So you know which one it is. So if I go here, since I have this one already, and click 1280 720 viewport, it automatically creates the right size. So once I have that, I can go over to my website and I'm gonna take screenshots of each particular segment. So I'll do the first few here just to show you. Um, I'm going to click Command Shift 4 and then drag and drop a box right at the top left corner here. And you kind of have to be a little precise and you might get it wrong a couple times. Freeze! All right, what's up? Um, I'm coming in post-production here to give you a quick tip that I forgot to mention during the recording, and that is when you're taking a screenshot, if you start your box and it's not in the right place, you know, your uh, command shift four and you drag and drop around a specific area, if it's not in the right place, and usually it's not, if you press space bar, you can then move the box around and sort of uh, change the uh, where that corner becomes. So if you hold space bar when you're creating a, a um, a drag and drop sort of window uh, to create a screenshot. It'll allow you to move it around so you can be even more precise. So I just wanted to make sure I shared that with you in case you didn't know already. Okay, let's get back to it. But you'll want to drag and drop it until, and you'll see on the lower right hand corner, it typically says the size of the window that you're dragging. So I have it 1280 by 720 here. And again, because we resize the window using that tool, it's fairly easy to do. So I'm gonna let go. It records that screenshot onto my desktop, as you can see here. And I'm, I'm gonna take a few more. So I'm actually gonna scroll down this website, but before I do that, I'm gonna see if I can remember or notice where this cuts off on this particular viewport. So as I could see, it sort of cuts off right here in the middle of this red button here. So I'm gonna scroll up. 
until I get to the middle of that red button inside the viewport, potentially right there. And I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to quickly create this little box here. Uh, boom. And I'm just going to do the same thing. I'll do one more for you. So it looks like uh, right below my chin here is where it starts up again. So and it doesn't need to be exact, but you know, just use your eyeball. It'll work out because the scrolling effect will sort of make it work for you if you just get it really close. So boom. So I took three screenshots, as you can see there. So let me close uh, Chrome, and I'm going to go to PowerPoint now, or excuse me, my keynote. So I just opened up a new presentation. Again, same size as the pre presentation I'm doing and the screenshots, 1280 by 720. I'm going to delete these uh, this text here because we're not going to add any text. And I'm going to simply, in the first slide, drop that first screenshot, if it'll let me. Boom. And then I'm just going to center it, and it'll snap for me if I have the snap guides uh, set for me. And I'm going to right click on the left side here, or I can click add new slide, but I'm just going to click a new slide there and do the same thing with the second screenshot we took. And center this. And the next slide, the last one we took. And where's the center? There it is. Okay, so now if I go back to slide one and if I just click through these, you'll see that it shows me uh, you know, all three of these, and it, it doesn't really look like it's from the same page or it's hard to tell. But the way you scroll down is using the inspector and having them transition from one to two and then two to three. So to do that, you click on inspector here at the top, and you want to click on the second tab here, which is the slide inspector. And the effect you want to go for is push. And if you don't change anything, it might push from left to right, which looks kind of funny. So you want to make sure it's bottom to top. And as you could see here in the preview section, it just looks like it scrolls right down the page for you. And you can change the duration if you'd like. One second seems to be uh, pretty good, but depending on the size of the room or how quickly you want to go, um, you might want to go a little bit slower or faster. It's totally up to you, but one second usually does the job. I'm going to click on the second slide and do the exact same thing. Second tab, the slide inspector tab, the slide inspector tab, effect, push, bottom to top, and as you can see, it does it there. And when I click play, it's going to scroll very nicely for me down the page. And then when I reach a certain point and I want to call anything out, I can use, uh, there's another video for keynote hacks that I have on you know, doing a light box effect. So if I wanted to highlight the part on the right hand side or some particular part of this website, you can do that. And then you can continue and scroll down the page with more screenshots if you'd like. So I hope that tutorial was helpful for you. It's, it's you know, no one's going to come up to you afterwards and probably say, wow, that was amazing because you did that slide transition uh, from one to an X. I mean, nobody is going to even notice, but it really adds a little bit of spice and just some sleekness to your keynote presentation, something that people aren't probably going to going to see in other presentations at the event that you're going to be presenting at, or if you're just doing a cool little uh, presentation for YouTube or for a slideshow you're doing elsewhere. So hope you enjoy that. Thanks so much, and I'll see you in the next video.